Hey guys, welcome back to Don't Forget the Art. I hope you're having a great day, a great week, and you are fired up and ready to get creative. So I will tell you, it has been crazy around here. Um, we're still in a construction zone, but we're pushing through. We've been making a lot of awesome progress lately. Um, boys' schedules are busy with baseball and sports and all of that. And trying to wrap up school as we're kind of starting to see the finish line and everything with a lot of different things. It's really exciting and my apologies that I have been busy around here, but I am ready and excited to do some pop art. So what is pop art? Pop art is uh, comes around in the 19 late 1950s into the 1960s. It is still of movement that is alive and well today. It's kind of twofold. It's on one hand bringing in um, popular culture into art. So again, we've seen this kind of cycle around a few times where artists start questioning or kind of poking fun at, well, what exactly is art? Pop art kind of does that again. It brings in popular culture, things like comic books, mass media, um, into art. It also, remember we're talking about the time in the late 1950s. So we're post-World War II and a lot of things have happened in the world, you know, post-World War II. We're talking about, you know, the greatest generation. They went through the Great Depression, then they went through World War II, and now they're coming into, you know, this post-World War um, uh, lifestyle. P suburbia, is becoming a thing and people are moving out of the cities and into suburbia and at the same time while that is happening tv is coming around um and so we're not just listening to the radio anymore we're you know seeing tv so advertising is becoming a big thing okay and so again the artists are kind of looking at that kind of saying well you know is that art advertising all the um, colors and um psychology and things like that that go along with advertising um, as well as as we're moving out of the cities you're kind of a lot of times getting away from you know those um, uh, small mom and pop shops and like what we're seeing today department stores and big box stores kind of becoming a thing and products that we're using are no longer really customized, but they're being more mass produced. So this mass production idea, kind of pulling into art and exploring that. All right, so I have a few examples here. Big um, artists from the pop culture movement that you would know would be um, yeah, obviously Andy Warhol, Roy Lichtenstein, and um, and uh, Keith Haring, um, kind of from the 80s and 90s. Um, so you'd know, you know, Mickey, the repeated Mickey. A lot of them that you know, um, and I have uh, samples of here, are, you know, repeated images. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, uh, you know, there aren't all repeated. Um, it's just some, po uh, some pieces that I figured you would know right away by seeing it like the Campbell soup cans and of course the you know multicolored Marilyn Monroe's both of those from Andy Warhol so I decided to play a little bit with this I was also kind of um, uh, challenged by a girl we were talking about art and she was saying her favorite fruit is a pineapple to which I told her I had never painted a pineapple before and she challenged me to paint a pineapple so I found these I've got some new canvases I was putting them away and I found these sitting around these are some six inch by six inch canvases um, so I am going to do um, an acrylic painting now you do not have to do an acrylic painting you can use any medium for this project it will work just fine whether you use markers crayons um, colored pencils paint um, you know, whatever your heart's desire, the biggest thing is to just have fun. Find popular culture and bring it into your, um, your art. It could be as, you know, complex as maybe a, um, a, a modern figure. So a lot of times you'll see art sometimes done in a realistic way, but if you see it kind of done in, you know, a fun way, mul multiple colors, things like that, that would be more of pop art, bringing in popular um, figures 
from past or present um, into your art, that would be pop art. A cartoon style like we showed, that would be pop art. Um, although we are going to do a cartoon um, uh, uh, style coming up soon. Um, but that would be, uh, you know, where uh, that would uh, lie in with popular culture. Or it could even be some of the symbols from you know, popular things right now, like the Nike swoosh or, um, you know, I, I don't know, I'm trying to think of anything that would be like really popular, but the logo or something like that, if you were to play around with it and have some fun, that would be pop art. So I thought these would be cute and perfect to kind of make one of those mass production type idea of um, art. And uh, I'll show you how it uh, goes. Okay, guys, so the first thing I did in the center of um, the, each of the paintings was to paint a diagonal of white. Why did I do that? Well, I'm going to use yellow on the top of each of these pieces, but I'm going to make the bottom part of that, um, of each of them a little bit different color, as you're going to see. One's pink, one's going to be blue, and one is going to be purple. Mixing yellow and blue is going to give me green. And mixing yellow with purple, those two are complementary colors, so that's going to actually give me brown. So while the pink and the yellow would actually give me a very beautiful kind of um, uh, melon, uh, orangey color, and that would be awesome, mixing the other two is not going to give me as pleasant of a color as I would really want. So I put a streak of the white in between the two in order to prevent that blending from happening and kind of create a nice... Um, merge of the colors from each side. So I finished up the pink one and here I go with the purple and you're going to see the purple. Um, I said again, started with the white and then gradually had it get darker on each side. And again, I'm going to do the same thing with the blue. Um, how you do your blending is entirely up to you. Blending is something that I'm still working on as an artist. Um, uh, I, I tend to um, blend differently than an artist should, which is not a bad thing. It's just a different way of doing it um, and something that I am continuing to work on to perfect uh, my blending. Um, but that's what it is. Um, but as you can see, I, that white streak nicely prevented the purple and yellow from merging and creating brown. And here is going to be the blue one. Um, and there will be a little bit of streaks of green in the blue, as you are going to see with the final product. But that's okay. Um, the green kind of matches uh, the, the um, pineapple that's going to uh, come as the final product here. And so it's not gonna look too terribly out of place. Um, and you'll find that too when you do sunsets, a lot of times you might be doing something like this one here in particular, when you're maybe doing a sunset or um, you know a beach scene or something like that, especially sunsets or sunrises, if you look carefully, you will see a green streak or so in the, in the clouds. Okay guys, so my backgrounds have um, dried and so I have these three, these um, cute three little um, backgrounds now. Now, I just wanted to take a quick minute to tell you what I am going to do next. So I have sketched out with a watercolor pencil the um, pineapples that I'm going to put on these little uh, canvases. Um, and I'm going to go over it first with white. Why am I going to do that? Some of the colors that I'm going to use for the pineapple, like the greens and the yellows, um, are not, um, they're too translu transparent, translucent um, to um, go over some of these darker or bolder colors. Okay, so I just wanted to take a minute because I know this comes down to um, personal preference of what you choose to do as the artist, okay? A lot of people say, save the paint, you know, just leave this part white and go around it. I don't do that. Um, you can, there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm going to tell you why I do this the way I do. 
I do my entire background when I know that I want it to look like it's one complete background. So for example, if I'm doing like a beach scene or something like that and maybe put a beach umbrella or something um, in front of it, I don't go around the umbrella. I would do the entire background first and then layer my things on top of it. So it appears as though it's a continuous, um, a continuous line. It doesn't look broken, okay? And that's what I have here. Um, I know artists who do it the other way, and that is completely your choice. There is no right or wrong way. This, you know, this is one of the, another one of those things with art where it's just a matter of preference. So what you're going to see next is me going over where I'm going to put the pineapple for the most part um, in these three paintings with white, and then I'm going to go over the white with the pineapple color. So my assumption is right now that I'm going to use, you know, green for the top, maybe some highlights of yellow or white or something there, or just lighter green. And then on the bottom, looking at some different pineapples um, online, it looks like there's mostly brown, uh, yellow, and a little touch of green. Um, maybe one of the unbleached titanium, you know, put some of that in. We'll see how it goes. Again, it's supposed to be pop art. It's supposed to be fun. So I'm trying not to get too realistic on this. I'm just going to try to have fun. All right. I'll see you on the other side, guys. Okay, guys. So the first thing that I did, as I mentioned, I am going to paint where I'm going to put the pineapples white. This will give me a blank canvas um in order to um, put my pineapple in place without having to fight with the colors taking over as you can see it completely whites out blanks out everything that i painted behind it now you can do the any background you know any painting you do you can do the background differently um, that is not a problem um, and just go around where you're going to paint. This is just what works for me. Now, as you saw in the blue one that I did there, I actually made a mistake. Some of the paint got on the side where I didn't want it. If that ever happens to you with acrylic paint, which as I mentioned, this is what I'm using right now, you can very easily fix it. Acrylic paint is beyond belief forgiving, and um, you can easily erase it when it is there. So while it was still wet, I cleaned off the brush, or you can get a brand new brush, you know, that's nice and clean, wet it, and then essentially use it as an eraser and erase that wet paint away and as I keep saying wet paint once it's dried it's done you can eat paint over it but once it's dried it's done you're not going to be able to erase it like that but you can do that while the paint is still wet and essentially use your paintbrush and water as an eraser to wipe that away paper towels helps too to wipe it away so I painted my pineapple yellow as you saw um, when I was looking at the pineapples, I saw a few different colors. So one was yellow, green, kind of a light beige color and brown. So I decided to use those in there and I'm going to kind of layer them in. Um, yellow, as I've mentioned before, is the most transparent or translucent. So I put it down first because everything else is going to cover it. Whereas if I put the other colors down first and then try to highlight in yellow, that's not always the easiest to do. Um, then I moved to the tops of the pineapples while that yellow is drying. Um, one thing you do need to be careful with with acrylic paints is the drying process. So if you try painting on um, acrylic paints as it's drying, you can actually start pulling up the paint off of the um, canvas. If this happens to you, stop what you're doing right away. Don't try to fix it, not while it's wet, not while it's in that tacky spot. You're only going to lead yourself into frustration, okay? So usually when you paint with acrylics, we've talked about this before, but if you're new to it, you need to kind of plan how you're going to um, paint um, so that you're working on places that are dry or wet. If it's in that drying process, the paint will actually start sticking to your paintbrush and you will pull it right up off of the canvas. 
When working on my tops, I started with a medium green. I then added the shadows with the darker green and then put in some lighter greens and eventually, as I'm putting in here, some yellows. Now, as I mentioned before, the yellow is difficult to see. This yellow that I'm using is a lemon yellow. It, it actually goes over pretty well. I'm also putting it on pretty thickly. Now this paint is wet, so how is it that this yellow is not mixing with this green? If you can see, I'm putting a lot of paint on the tip of that brush. Okay, I'm really loading it up. And then I'm dragging the paint, not the paint brush, on to the canvas. This creates a textured look, which I have told you in the past, I do like texture in my paintings, but it also means that my paintbrush is not actually touching the, the um, uh, paint, and so it's just laying the paint on. It's not mixing it and blending it on the canvas. When I had planned on doing a pineapple, my original thought was to do triangles or diamond shapes for the pineapple. But again, as I started looking at the pineapples, I noticed that they kind of had this mound shape to it or kind of half circle-ish shape. So I went with that. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, there was a few times where I was hearing a certain cartoon song about a pineapple under a sea as I was painting these. Anywho, so I started my mounds with the green part on top, and then I used the unbleached titanium white um, underneath it, as you saw there, I'm gonna finish it. Um, to you know, give a little bit more definition, a little bit more detail to my pineapples. And this is where I can tell you with this part of the project where it started feeling like that mass production um, uh, artwork. Okay, so those, you know, duplicated um, Campbell's soup cans or the Marilyn Monroe's, those types of things that I talked about um, that are so iconically pop art. Yeah, I could totally feel that as I was doing this part of it because, um, you know, you're just basically repeating everything that you've done over and over again. Now, I just have started working on a new series um, in my art business that kind of has a little bit of a feel to it like that. Um, but this was definitely different because it, it, you know, you're essentially doing the same thing over and over again. Um, but I think if I was to display these three pieces together, I think that would make, um, you know, a bit of a difference there. So I put in the top part with that green and I actually mixed a lighter green um, with yellow to kind of get a little bit more of like a limey yellowish green. Um, and then I put that unbleached titanium in. And then here I'm putting um, a brown, I think this one was burnt umber. Um, on the bottom where that darker brown part was on some of the pineapple pictures that I looked at. Uh, it, again, I think it just helped to make the pineapple, um, you know, pop a little bit more and give it a little bit more detail, a little bit more fun. Even though this was supposed to be a pop art project, and you could certainly do this as um, detailed and realistic or not detailed and not realistic as you want it to be. Um, I will leave that entirely up to you. Um, I decided to try to go a little more, you know, kind of cartoon-esque realistic, I guess is how I would maybe characterize this. I then used a darker sap green to kind of go over the outside of that and where I may have lost some of my brown, I'm putting a little bit of it back in. I repeated the other three in a very similar way. And uh, yeah, I really like the way that this one turned out, guys. I hope you do too. And here you go, guys. Here is my finished product. I think they are very cute. You know, I don't know, maybe it looks like a pineapple, <laughs> maybe it doesn't. Um, but it was definitely fun. I loved the feeling of doing the three. That was very unique um, and something I don't usually do. You know, I usually just do one piece and that's it. So this was definitely fun, but I could feel, and I know I didn't show you guys, you know, finishing all of them, but as I was doing each one, I could feel that kind of mass production kind of feeling to um, 
you know, making these. It was definitely unique, definitely different. Pop art is not one style that I have really um, done too much um, outside of school, my school days. Um, but this was fun. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think of my pineapples. <laughs> And uh, I can't wait to see what you guys create. Make sure you uh, post your pictures over in the Facebook group and uh, or in the comments on the blog. And I look forward to seeing them. You guys take care. Happy arting. Have fun doing it. Enjoy, guys.